Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and it is our favorite time of the week because there's new knives to look at. They're the coolest new ones that have just hit our shelves and they're right here in front of me. So let's get into it. All right, first thing this week, uh, actually debuting, launching, dropping, whatever you want to call it today, it's a penguin, flightless bird. It's landing. Landing. Sure, we'll go with that. Uh, the QSP Penguin button lock is now here in Knife Center exclusive configuration here with an upgraded S35 VN blade steel. Uh, best of all, the price on this, about $85 right now. Pretty good deal for the quality you're getting with QSP. The Q in their uh, name stands, in fact, for quality and quality service price. Price, also uh, a good place uh, for this knife to sit. It's the same size as the original liner lock penguin, yet it is now equipped with a button lock and a flipper tab. Uh, previous versions of the flipper version of this knife were larger than the standard penguin, but this is the classic size. Just over three inches long, true sheep's foot profile, perfectly straight edge, no uh, modified belly or anything going on right here. High flat grind, not too thick, not too thin, just an all around fantastic utility and work focused blade that you can still, despite its small size, get a, a full four fingered grip on it, even if you have slightly larger than average hands like myself. I do kind of uh, bring my index finger up, touching the, uh, over the, wrapping over the top a little bit, I should say, of the flipper tab right there, but not uncomfortably so. The meat of your grip is happening with the uh, those back fingers anyway. Solid, solid grip on that blade. And now with that nice button lock action. The flipping action works well. The flicking action, if you hold the button down and flick open and closed is also quite good. Another thing I always appreciate on a work knife is the finger safe nature of that closing. Your fingers stay completely out of the blade path while it is closing. We've got a deep carry pocket clip inset in the handle scales with flush head screws, or actually not quite flush head. They're a little bit domed, but not going to snag on anything and reversible too, because we all know even though a button lock is right hand facing, very usable with the left hand as well. So nice to see the, uh, the ambidextrous carry uh, maintained on this knife even though they do maintain it in a slightly different way uh, than the original Penguin because it's not mounted inside uh, the handle scales, uh, inside the liners, basically, um, the way those originals were, but you have it mounted from the outside with a uh, blockout plate as well. If the blockout plate, whatever you wanna call that thing, filler tab, uh, is a little too bright on this satin version, you can also get the black stonewashed blade version, and the filler tab there is black. Uh, so it really blends in more to the uh, black and orange coral style micarta that we've got there. And both of them, same price, 85 bucks, excellent performance in terms of the uh, blade steel, excellent working performance and excellent operative performance. It feels great in the hand when you use it. Everything works uh, very well and feels very high quality. Now for a slightly fancier, a little bit, more than slightly fancier QSP, the Puffin. Now, this one bird actually can fly, so don't let it fly away from you, perhaps. We'll go with that. Uh, the QSP Puffin, also with a just over three inch long blade of S35 VN steel, but in this case with a drop point blade and full titanium handles here, titanium back with the frame lock, milled titanium pocket clip, titanium front with a contoured inlay, uh, in this case, black, white, and blue carbon fiber. Oh, there's a couple different colors, uh, and you can also get uh, a couple different colors with a blackened finish on the handle and blade too. Really nice, more premium feeling knife. Also just a good general purpose shape. Uh, 150 or $149 for this one right here. And Again, super high quality. Definitely not a cheap knife, but you know, talking about quality service price, the price for what you're getting here, all wrapped up in this is pretty hard to beat uh, the way they have this kind of sitting. The inside of the titanium handles are pocketed a little bit to remove a little bit of weight as such. 
it really is a nimble feeling knife in the hand. Let's see, weight on it is three ounces, so not a featherweight for sure, like something like the Benchmade Bug Out, but definitely not something that is going to get in its own way, not gonna weigh you down, not gonna feel it until you need it. Great blade, I mean, again, kind of like the uh, Penguin, not too thick, not too thin. We've got like a saber height flat grind here, so it could technically be slicier, but they left it a little bit more robust in this case. Should be a pretty decent slicing geometry though. Yeah, feels really good. Didn't really jump out to me off the page just in terms of, uh, of its looks. I'm generally not a huge fan of this style of carbon fiber. That's just me, but in the hand, yeah. Solid, solid design for sure. All right, let's go way fancy here for a minute. And this is definitely not an inexpensive knife. And it's definitely not a cheap knife here. The Custom Knife Factory Sukhoi 4. I'm here to argue that this is actually at its $580 price point, a little bit of a bargain. <laughs> I know that sounds stupid, but let me show you everything you're actually getting here. You've got a four inch blade M398 steel, a little more exotic than the M390. Hand rubbed finish, beautiful hand rubbed finish there. I mean, I don't even want to touch it. I probably shouldn't, but it's looking very, very good. But then moving back, it's really the handles that set this thing apart, both in terms of the materials being used and the execution of the design and the construction of it are all really, really impressive. First of all, you've got stonewashed titanium, and that's the least exotic thing uh, going on with the entire knife. Two tones of stonewashed titanium. I'll get more to that in a second. Marbled carbon fiber inlays, one, two, three, four of them. Here on the backside, Zerku tie pocket clip, Zerku tie pivots front and back as well. Rather intricate looking. Zirconium backspacer right here. Very cool stuff. And just check out all of what's going on here. So you've got your backspacer, you've got Screws here on the front, just these two, and the two there on the back. Massive piece of metal there. Almost gives it the look of like an integral, and at first I actually thought it was before I kind of investigated a little further, because you've got the titanium portion here at the bottom, which is the same as the titanium portion here up, up at the top. It blends, mates up with the other bits of titanium, and then the zirconium. So it kind of wraps around the front and towards the back. The zirconium starts here, wraps around the tail. The way these two pieces of titanium are sculpted and flow together, not just visually this way, but the feel of the, the actual valleys of the handle where it fits in your hand, it is spectacular. Truly, truly is. And it's about the same price, just a little bit more than a standard uh, Chris Reeve Sabenza, which is definitely a benchmark of quality in terms of exoticness and, and execution here. It's right up there and you're getting more in terms of exotic materials and innovative build structure. Just superb, really, really, really superb. If you're in the market for this sort of thing, you'll know that $580 for this is actually not that bad at all. There you go. It's kind of a bird. Sukhoi? Yeah. It's a, those are fighter jets, right? Yes. Mm, yes, indeed. Uh, next up, we've got the Enrique Pena X-Series Sicario. Uh, these are starting uh, at about $320, made by Riot for Enrique. And the Sicario is kind of a long, slender design, yet built up a little more um, in terms of its robustness than a lot of long, slender designs can be. Rather than like thin, slicey, long scalpels, this is more of a thin, long, tanky, precision-striking missile. We'll go with that. <laughs> made sense in my head as I was saying it, but as I was saying it out loud, it made less sense, but we'll leave that in probably. Yes. It's a, it's a cool knife for sure. Three and three quarter inch blade M4 tool steel here. Uh, very high end powder metallurgy tool steel, very tough and definitely in keeping with the big burly vibes or not so much burly, not big burly, but like slender burly. Stick with me, folks. It's very cool. And it's a cool material to see more of on folders, I think, too. Titanium handles, jungle wear carbon fiber inlays on 
the, or sorry, fat carbon, I should be specific, front and back, but there are a few different versions, a few different inlay materials you can get on the site. We'll make sure to link to the series there. The titanium itself has a bit of that matte texture, uh, not to you know, keep bringing up uh, the Chris Reeves Sabenza, but not like their classic uh, chalky feel of their blasted titanium, not quite like that, but kind of getting into that realm a little bit. And very cool pocket clip, tail mount, or sorry, uh, mounted with a screw from the opposite side. So a very clean look when it's sitting there in your pocket, nice space for a lanyard as well. And oh no, it's my nemesis, the front flipper. Yeah, you'll be fine. How's this gonna go? No problem, works <laughs> worked quite well actually. Very cool knife. You've got the precision of that long slender profile, but with the uh, slightly thicker blade stock here and the high flat grind, you've got some power. You've got some meat behind the potatoes. I'm weird. I'm coming up with weird analogies today, but we're gonna we're gonna go with it. <laughs> um, so those are definitely pricey knives. If you want something that kind of gets some of the vibes of that sort of thing, but maybe you've got a hundred dollars to spend instead, check this out. Cancept. I'd say Cancept along with QSP right now in terms of you know the the amount of premium feeling knife you can get for the money. They're kind of hard to beat those two brands are kind of leading in in my opinion. But this knife right here, the Corvid S. The Corvid has been a very popular folding knife series from Cancept available in several different sizes. They now have the S which is a fixed blade version right here. Uh, they start at $59 actually, uh, with a 14 C 28 N stainless steel blade and micarta handles. This version right here is one of the fancy boys at $100. Like I mentioned, uh, we've got S 35 VN blade steel and copper foil carbon fiber that just looks so so cool. Does it not? It does. I'm here to tell you it looks great in person. There's a nice shimmer. The uh, gold anodized hardware is a nice offset to it as well. Are there any knives that aren't birds? Is the Corvette a bird? It's a raven. Oh, is it really? Yeah. With a, that's with a C though. The sheath for this knife is Kydex, right there. Uh, comes with a simple clip right here. You could clip it inside the pocket, although it would take up a fair bit of room, although it should sit fairly flat. Actually, that, that might not be a half bad uh, pocket fix blade right here. You know, as long as you don't need, uh, need it to take up a minimal amount of space in your pocket, that should work and plenty to grab onto from the top side of the hem. You could also, of course, carry it inside the waistband if you want, uh, and if you want some other type of belt attachment, it looks like a small tech lock uh, or a Civivi T-clip should fit this thing, no problem. Next up, we've got several new folding versions of the Corvid, including this very, very fancy version uh, with, this called the Corvid M Plus, uh, 3.07 inch blade here, uh, Damascus, what is this Damascus material? It looks like a VG10 Damascus, if I'm, if I'm being honest here. I bet you that's what it is, although we don't have it listed on the site currently. Uh, if we're able to find that out, we will update the, uh, the listing, of course. Uh, but it looks like a, uh, a VG10 Damascus to me. Lightning Strike anodized titanium handles, $170 for this bad boy. Uh, but again, several new uh, versions of uh, this knife have just landed again. We'll link to the series down below. Big chunky feel in the hand on this one. All four fingers, no problem, even without using that finger choil there, which will allow you to choke up. Both of these uh, Corvid knives have a high flat grind, not too thick on the blade stock either. So they are gonna be pretty decent or pretty efficient cutters. You've got this big, broad, powerful shape to really shove through some heavier cuts when you need to. This is a liner locking knife right here, which allows them to carry uh, that full coverage of the anodized pattern there on the back. Also means you're not gonna accidentally hit parts of the lock bar when you go to flip it open. And let's do that now. Wow. Yeah, great, great feel. Resounding thwack. Uh, you could also thumb flip it or thumb stud it, thumb flick it. Uh, let's try the reverse flick using the fuller, shall we? Maybe. A little bit of wrist got there, no problem. You can also do that uh, that slow roll thing with the fuller as well, or use the thumb studs for the slow slow open as well. Plenty of options, and really 
This knife is about being fun to experience, so the more ways you get to experience it, the better. Next up, the Rafe from Cancept. S35 VN blade on this, 2.6 inches long, bead blasted titanium handles and a liner lock here. Same advantages on this knife, actually even more so on a smaller knife since there's fewer places to put your fingers. You're not gonna get hit on that frame lock away you don't want to here. Now, obviously the very defining feature of this uh, particular knife is this little hook here on the front. Check it out, you can see a little bit thicker on the blade stock. This is a compact tank, so to, so to speak, but power, power, power. Uh, what are you gonna do with that hook? Well, I can think of two things. One, it very clearly looks like a bottle opener. And although we haven't tested it, that looks like it should work. It could. Would you say, Thomas? Um, be careful though, because you, you know, you're locking here, but if you are using this as a bottle opener, and something were to accidentally disengage, if you were manhandling it somehow and disengage that lock, you're gonna push right towards that. Be careful. I wouldn't put your finger here to prevent that either, because if you've had a few adult adult libations and you're doing that, I slip on a bag. Anyway, you could use it as that. It also works as a pocket deployer, much like an Emerson Wave or other similar devices, which are usually placed a little further back. It's the first time I've seen one placed this far out, so the opening action is gonna be a little bit different than those types of things, but it will do it. Just use it closed as a bottle opener. Yeah, that makes way more sense. There you go. The more you know. Graphic. Anyway, it also looks like it will work as a front flipper. I haven't tried it yet, so this is gonna end poorly. It kinda works. You, you folks that are good at front flipping will do way better than I will. There you go, very cool, good quality on them. About 150 bucks for this one, if I hadn't mentioned that. Um, ooh, actually there's versions with uh, some of that copper foil carbon fiber as well for $148. Usually those are uh, a bit more expensive. You can uh, get something really cool looking too. Not that that's not cool looking nice there, but you know what I mean, check it out. All right, let's look at some more uh, utilitarian stuff, but not necessarily less expensive stuff. Uh, Big Eye Design, we're happy to be bringing them on board here at the Knife Center. Uh, they've got several models that we've brought in. Uh, they do a lot of uh, utility blade holders, knives, uh, everyday carry pry bars and screwdrivers, that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna focus on three here this week. Maybe we'll show some more uh, in the next week, but we'll link to the brand below. First is their Thai Utility Frame Locking Folder. $175 for this, and it is very high quality feeling. It is obviously a utility blade holder, holds a standard hexagonal utility blade right there. And when you take that out, it actually works as a bottle opener as well. So it's technically a multi-tool, right? Don't we know it? There it is, frame lock folded up. It is kind of squared off and chunky to give you a good amount of grip. And yet there's, it's not, blocky at the same time, if that makes any sense. It's kind of sculpted away just enough in just the right spots to keep it from feeling just like a big rectangle in your pocket. Feels really quite good. The advantage of a uh, blade holder like this too is you can really choke up on it, get right behind that blade, and there's plenty of length there for even larger hands to really push some uh, power into that blade as you use it. I really like the execution of the pocket clip right here. As you can see, it's technically mounted from the tail, although it's not like completely deep carry, it's pretty darn deep carry, uh, but it is reversible there and it's held in place. Actually, is it? Yeah, it is reversible. It's held in place by this nice big titanium cap there on the end, which feels really, really cool. There you go, you can check that out. Uh, they're probably more well known right now though for this device, which is called the TPT Slide coming in about 80 bucks. And this is a utility blade holder, but it is so much more than that actually. It's actually a little bit remarkable. First off, it does have the utility blade sliding capability with the switch there at the top. And you'll notice this actually doesn't come with a sharp utility blade. It comes with two of these, what they call like travel safe inserts essentially. And before you think, hey, that's dumb, I've actually used one of these on our, the recent trip to uh, Blade Show West. 
Uh, I didn't travel with any checked bags, so I was just working on with my carry-on stuff. So I used one of these inserts as my kind of EDC while I was out there. And while it's never gonna replace a knife 100%, be surprised at what I could get away with with one of these opening boxes, opening tape stuff, no problem. Uh, even slicing the little like, you know, security stickers that hold boxes closed, I was able to uh, kind of slice through those despite it not being sharp. And Thomas actually saw me do this, you know, here before I went on the trip, I even tested it on one of those, like, I found like the most super obnoxious plastic clam packed product I could find over in the warehouse. And I tried to open it with one of these and you can do it. You're not gonna slice through it, but you can you know, punch holes through it and work around it like you might with a can opener. So if you can't have a knife where you are for one reason or another, this goes a long way to still helping you feel like you're prepared to tackle just the everyday stuff that might need some kind of blade. It works exceptionally well. They do call this side of it a camping fork, which I kind of, in all honesty, I roll my eyes at that a little bit. I wouldn't want to eat with one of these, but the other side has does not have these cutouts. Either one is going to be able to uh, puncture and pierce when needed, despite having no sharp or pointy edges. Kind of an impressive thing right there. Uh, comes with this uh, satin one and a uh, black one as well, which rests inside the leather pocket slip this comes with. Now, apart from all that, we've got more functionality. It works when the blade is retracted as a bottle opener. And you can see that open jaw section is actually, we'll call it serrated perhaps. Um, it's actually a universal gripping wrench. So you can kind of wedge a nut in there, wedge it into those, uh, those toothed jaws essentially, and you can turn with it. You can also turn standard quarter inch sized bits there on the back. You've also got some semblance of a titanium pry bar there all in this thing. Oh, forgot the pocket clip too. Also comes with a pocket clip. All in a thing that easily fits in the palm of my hand right there and completely disappears. Very, very cool. I think 80 bucks, you can get this version uh, as well as a, uh, a black Cerakoted, black DLC version uh, as well, if you prefer that kind of look. Uh, my only criticism with it, I'll say, is the blade changing, although it requires no tools to do it, is a little bit fiddly. That's maybe the only uh, downside of it, but Man, that really does a lot in a very small platform. Uh, next up, one more item from them. We've got the Thai EDS-2 frame lock screwdriver, $120 for this. Uh, it is, as the name suggests, a frame locking screwdriver. Uh, the only thing you don't wanna do with this is really flick the blade, or the blade, flick the, uh, the tool holder out. I did that over at my desk while we were uh, testing this out. And even though it's held in by a magnet, this bit went flying and it took us like 10 minutes, maybe not quite. It took us a while to find it on the carpet that was out there. So maybe don't flick it like you might a, uh, you know, a lot of modern uh, frame locking knives, but maybe roll it open more like you would a Sebenza. Eh? Didn't think I could mention the Sebenza again, did you? But I did. Uh, comes with four bits. It comes with a Phillips head bit right there uh, and another bit here in the arm, which is a little fiddly to get out. I found it's easy to, uh, or easiest to use one of the other bits to help push it. Got your uh, flat head right there, pop these back in. And then in the body of it, you've got two more standard bits. A, what's this one, a T6? No, that's a T8 right there. Uh, and the square bits, what's that? That's a Robertson, right? Box. Box. Call it a box. It's a box bit. Uh, but the advantage, the cool thing here though is it is just a standard quarter inch drive bit. So you could load this up with whatever you need, whatever suits your daily requirements. And you can also easily have more bits stashed uh, with you. It, you know, throw them in a little bit holder, what have you, and plenty of options there. And it all folds up again to a very nice compact position. Pocket clip as well should mention that. Cool stuff. Check them out. I like this brand. Next up from Ken Onion and his carbon brand, we've got the Flatline. And I gotta say, this is probably my favorite carbon yet. Uh, all of this stuff has been built very well, but this design more than the others, I think is just really speaking to me. Uh, $128 to start off with. We've got uh, a bolstered titanium handle. 
with G10 inlays and a 154cm blade, three and three eighths of an inch long. Very cool flared drop point shape to it here. It almost has a bit of, a, of like cotton sampler vibes to it, uh, but it's got that kind of long, narrow executive styling, you know, reinforced as, of course as well by the way it folds into the handle where the blade is almost completely hidden. But it has a little more flair, a little more style than a, style might be the wrong word, but a little more flair in the actual you know, descriptive sense of the word than a lot of the uh, executive styled knives tend to come with. Uh, you can also get versions with uh, some cool carbon fibers <coughs> with uh, red and blue, sorry, red or blue, depending on which version you get, uh, about $180 for those. But I happen to really personally like the classic titanium and black G10. It has a classy vibe that works every day as well. Bolstered style frame lock there on the back, milled titanium clip, milled titanium backspacer with lanyard loop right there and the flipping action. It's great. Full flat grind on these bad boys, not too thick, not too thin here. Just a great everyday shape with a little bit of extra reach, but not something, of course, that's gonna take up a lot of room in your pocket. Barely more than a fancy pen. All right, let's go real utilitarian here. Uh, the Native Chief Lightweight from Spyderco. Four inch blade, or just over four inch blade, I should say, of BD1N steel, injection molded, bi-directionally textured handles. This thing is a ton of knife for the weight. 3.1 ounces for just over four inches of blade. Not quite four inches of sharpened edge because you do have the finger choil there, where just in case you've got exceptionally larger than average hands, you could choke up there and still have enough handle to get anything done that you need to get done. Definitely a big easy knife for sure. Very easy to carry, not gonna take up a lot of really room or weight in your pocket, and yet you've got a ton of reach. The action on this black DLC version right here is a little bit, not super, super smooth out of the box, but these tend to wear in a little bit over time. I bet you satin versions of this wouldn't have uh, that same thing going on. But I like the DLC coating right here. It keeps things nice and subtle. You've got a little bit of sheen to the knife. I like it. Mid-mounted lockback for ease of use, left-handed or right-handed four position pocket clip to suit any carry preference. Tons of grip, made in the USA, priced about 157 and some change right now. Very, very cool. For big EDC cuts without needing something big and overbuilt, because this is kind of a, uh, a thinner blade stock here, big efficient EDC cutting, even some use in the kitchen, I think this is gonna be a fantastic option. Next up, the SOG Ether FX Fixed Blade. Uh, priced regularly at about $159.99. Right now we've actually got it on sale for about $128. I'm not sure how long that sale is gonna last, however. But with this, you've got a skeletonized hunting slash hiking knife, blaze orange G10 handles, skeletonized, nice and thin. So it, you've got just enough there to give yourself a little extra grip without it taking up too much space or weight. Uh, another popular thing folks like to do to achieve the same thing would be to paracord wrap a skeletonized handle, but hygienic wise, especially if you're using it in a hunting scenario where you know animal fluids can get on it, maybe not quite the best solution for all of those. This gets you that same thing while being much easier to clean. Blade, just over three inches long, nice thin full flat ground drop point with plenty of belly. This thing is going to be a very nice small slicer. And with the S35 VN blade steel, you're gonna have good edge retention as well. Calling back to the, uh, the grip conversation, the blade doesn't let the handle be the only thing responsible for maintaining your grip. There's plenty of extra grip or traction surfaces essentially on the blade too. Fully jimped all the way out towards the tip, meaning no matter where you place your thumb or index finger, when you're doing those more precision things, you've got traction there, you're not gonna slip. And the pinch grip, thanks to the dimpled texture right where your fingers might go, also keeps your hands from slipping forward onto that edge or helps keep your hands from slipping forward onto that edge. Really, really cool. Very lightweight. Uh, let's see, without the sheath, 2.1 ounces, not bad. And the sheath itself does not add much to it either. It is 
orange, just like the handle. It clicks in and it boasts the rotatable uh, belt clip here that SOG has been putting on their fixed blades. Loosen the screws up and you can rotate it without taking it off the handle itself and some retention thanks to the uh, J hook termination there at the clip. Very, very cool little knife. All right, how about a much bigger fixed blade now? Uh, Case Knives uh, has two new collaborations with Laramie Miller uh, that are a bit of a departure for what they do. Here is the first, the Sasquatch buoy coming in about 185 and very cool rustic finish on the 1095 high carbon blade, uh, seven and three quarters of an inch long. I actually really like the finish here. It's a Caswell coating, uh, which kind of reminds me of like gun bluing in a way, but it's not gun bluing. You get to still enjoy like the cool aspects of the steel. Like it's not, it's not a coating, it's more of a finish essentially. And I like that. Really helps uh, or ties in the rustic vibes with the Micarta handles right here. Speaking of those handles, check out that wide shape. Definitely going to work for a wide variety of hands. It's not super, super thick, but it is, does have plenty of width to it here. And I think for someone, both of these knives actually, for someone who might be arthritic, for example, those won't be the only folks who would enjoy this handle, but I think these are ideal for those folks, especially because you've got plenty to wrap onto there without having to really constrict your hand. It's a wide, you know, not fat, but wide grip. And it kind of works pretty well. Back to uh, the buoy here for a second. As I said, uh, seven and three quarter inches long. Uh, we're about three sixteenths of an inch thick, it looks like. And a kind of stout flat grind with secondary bevel here. Not a crazy slicer, but this should hit pretty hard if you're gonna use this for some light chopping. This should be able to do that fairly well. Recurve on the blade here does a couple things. One, it keeps the weight out towards the tip a little bit more for a little more power when you swing with it, but it also brings that tip or brings the uh, edge in and closer to your hand here at the base if you need to do some whittling or do some draw knife stuff with it as well. Gives you the grip you need where it's fatter and the precision you need and the recurve right here should work really well as a spoke shave in an improvised situation. Protruding lanyard should work for hammering. Uh, the screws are actually, it looks like it's held on by cutlery rivets. So keep that in mind if you are thrashing and abusing this knife and excellent vibes on the sheath as well. Definitely matches the rustic vibe, big pocket with a, I almost said lanyard loop, belt loop on the back. And then the other one in the series, the Sasquatch Skinner. We'll start with the sheath since we were just looking at that. Same vibes sheath wise right there. Uh, three and three quarter inch 1095 blade, same thickness as the buoy right there. Actually, it's the same, yeah, same handle on both, but the Skinner lacks the protruding pommel there. And this is definitely gonna give you more slicey vibes with its full flat grind and tr almost trailing tip. We've got a straight backed profile right there. Really good if you're doing anything surface oriented, like if you're breaking down game or doing any food prep on a cutting board, that's gonna work, uh, that type of orientation is gonna work real well for that sort of thing. And again, like I said, that handle provides just a really big control surface for which you to, on which for you to work with. We'll go with that. <laughs> All right, let's end some things with uh, this. We haven't had any like, oh, we did have a button. We started with some button stuff. Let's end with some button stuff. Vosteed has a new version of their Thunderbird, slightly smaller than the original uh, by about a quarter inch in the blade. We got a three and a quarter inch blade, two versions of this, two tiers. This one right here is the expensive one. Comes with L-Max blade steel and titanium handles. A couple different uh, finishes available there, including a black stone wash frag pattern that's pretty cool. These are like 199 bucks, but for 135 bucks and Actually, Vosteed's providing a lot of value these days too. Three and a quarter inch blade with a G10 handle, M390 blade for 135. That's pretty great. It's got all the things that made the original Thunderbird so much fun to use. You've got that button lock that allows that centrifugal action so, so nicely. So it keeps bouncing back on me, interesting. Uh, you can flipper it with the reverse side of the flipper tab there. You can front flip it. Yes, I promise you can. You can reverse flick it. 
you can thumb open it. Just plenty of different options to work with. Makes it quite enjoyable to use. And a cool blade shape too. Not super slicey, it's kind of a saber height. Wait, well, let me see, is that hollow actually? Yeah, yeah, we got a subtle hollow grind back here it feels like. And a flat grind there at the tip. So compound grinds, nice fuller there. Just fun stuff, still very useful day to day. A little easier to carry for a lot of folks day to day. You know, the, th the quarter inch reduction in size doesn't seem like much, but it does feel like a much more compact proposition overall. Deep carry clip, inset with flush head screws, very nice, reversible, good for the lefties with that uh, button lock as well. Very, very cool. Today's video brought to you by the letter bird. That's true. We've had a lot of birds this, because the Corvid, as you, you astutely oh, mentioned oh, earlier, is, uh, is bird related, although C technically for the, uh, the birds there. Um, what are the birds? Yeah, so a bird, bird, bird. Well, Spider Crow has their bird lineup, but this is not a bird. Uh, and Thunderbird. And we're going to end with the Hydra. Not bird related. Probably I'm sorry. Eat birds. Probably eats birds. There we go. That's our tie in. Uh, the Heretic Hydra is a very cool knife. Uh, it is a single action automatic. So kind of harkening back to the time before the double action OTF uh, came to prominence. So it's not going to retract as quickly or as easily or as conveniently as a, a DA OTF will. Uh, but it, ha it provides a different sort of fun than, uh, than those. And it's cool to see folks not abandoning that genre. They're still very cool, even if they take two hands to close. Here it is. Let me show you the closing action right here. You've got a safety switch for the button here. You slide that back. This is, this is a single thumbed affair. I'm just doing this to show you, but slide it back and push the button down. Grab the lanyard at the back. Oh, I messed it up. Oh, I was still holding the, I was still holding the button down. That would do it. Dumb, dumb. <laughs> That would have been way more impressive, wouldn't it, if it worked the first time I did it? For anyone sticking around here at the end, thank you. Anyway, to fire it, we'll do that. Slide up, push the button. Thwack. That is why a single action OTF still is worth keeping around. That opening action is fantastic. Basically, with a double action OTF, you've got to have springs in both directions uh, to you know, retract it just as easily as you extend it. But in this particular knife, all of the spring force is going one direction. So right now, unlike a single act or a double action OTF, the blade is under spring tension, which is why, of course, you've got the little safety switch right there just to make sure you don't accidentally hit the button. But when you're ready, slide it back. Super, super awesome. Super awesome blade on this too. Three and three, three and five eighths of an inch long. There we go. MagnaCut blade steel. This is the first MagnaCut on the table today. Interesting. What does that mean? It is very tough. It holds an edge a long time and it is very stainless in quite an impressive combination of those three elements. And this one right here with its thicker blade stock, this thing is a bit of a battering ram with an edge on it. You've got the recurve there to add a little more edge, of course, as well. And then here, we'll pretend I didn't do the thing before. This is why, this is what you do to retract the blade. You thing the thing, you do the thing, and you go, uh, boom. Eh? Ah, did it. <sighs> Feels so dang good. Aluminum handles. I'll tell you what it is about the feel. It's almost like a super uh, satisfying bolt action on a rifle. It's just money. Very cool. Check them out. A few different colors while they last. All right, that's all we've got for today. Thanks for sticking around. Let me know your thoughts of the knives down in the comments below and to get your hands on them, check out the links in the description, which will take you to knifecenter.com. And don't forget about our long running knife rewards program, meaning when you pick up one of these blades today, you get some free money to spend on a future one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera and we are signing off. See you next time. Subscribe.